So in today's episode, we talk with Arcteryx on their commitment to environmental social governance, or ESG, challenges, opportunities they see, and what the future holds for any businesses looking to implement ESG programs. Let's make a social impact. Hi everyone, I'm Carl. Welcome to The Social Impact Show, where CSR professionals get the latest strategies and tips to help them scale and grow their CSR and goodness programs. Now remember, if this is your first time on this channel and you want to get the latest strategies from the experts, hit the subscription button below, hit the little notification bell so you don't miss anything. So today we have an amazing show. We got two special guests. So my first guest, she's a co-host. Her name is Erica Graham Jordan. She is the Regional Vice President with Benevity. And our second, our special guest is Dan Walker, who is the social impact lead with Arcteryx. Awesome. Hi, Dan. So great to have you on today. Thank you. Um, we're going to jump right into it. Um, so we have so many conversations around ESG um, within the Benevity client community and with, with the larger, uh, larger social impact community. So my question to you is, of all these ESG areas, environmental, social, and governance, which pillar is the most important to Arcteryx? It's a great question. And, and thanks for having me, both of you. It's, it's great to see you both. Um, I almost feel it's a trick question. <laughs> I think we start off in that place. Hmm. They're so interconnected. Um, the, the piece for us as well, I think we're a brand um, really focused on, on building gear to connect with nature. Um, that sits at the heart of who we are when we initially built the climbing harness for the first time. It was really inspired by that, that connection to nature. Um, that really reflects in our work too. Um, it's about the importance of connection to nature, the importance of creating equitable access to nature so people can connect with those spaces. Um, what we then see and the research continues to show is, is the power of that connection to nature starts to promote for our environmental behaviors too. Um, so really the, the, I see them very much interlinked um, and that shows up in our work. I think as a brand, so many of us gravitate towards it through our appreciation of nature, our appreciation of us being part of this, this ecosystem. And that flows then into the work that we do, um, both in the environmental space and the social space and tying it together through the governance. Um, so yeah, I really see them all, all as important. I couldn't separate them. And I almost think to do so would, would, would do it an injustice in some ways. Thank you. That was that was quite a lovely insight into just also the culture of your team, right? And how it sounds as though ESG, when you connect it with the core culture of the organization, it's it's not something you just talk about. It's something that's a living, breathing aspect within the organization. I, I totally agree. I think that's the key to me. It's almost the, the core values. I think we've always had those since the founding of, of the brand. We've just continued to get better at how we express them and how we focus our work in the most impactful areas possible. I think that's the thing that we've continued to get better as, but, but it really comes from our, our core values. Um, and I think anybody who's, who's moving in this space, that's, that's where it needs to come from. Excellent. So we're going to drill a little bit deeper into this. We know that some companies are, are like you and are further on the ESG spectrum. Some are just getting started, right? Some, you know, we have conversations and they say, my C-level team, our board, we're being pushed for the ESG from top down or our employees bought a bought career at grassroots up and we're not quite sure where to start. So I, you know, the question for you more, more advanced in this journey is for companies eager to enhance their ESG programs or start them from scratch, what advice do you have for them? Maybe even where to focus first for some of these new entrants into the ESG space? Yeah, I, I think it almost goes back to your, your previous point of it has to start with your values. I think that's the, the first step is really to understand your identity as an organization. Um, ask those questions of why do we exist? What, what is our role in the world? What are the core values that we hold? Um, and then start to layer in and, and, and map out the impacts that you have as a business, um, kind of within the social realm, but also within the environmental realm. And then once you can start understanding the scope of your impacts. Um, and I think doing that in partnership with others too is really important. I would say that I don't, definitely don't feel to, as though you need to do it in a vacuum. I think there are many others within the industry. I think we certainly benefit from partnership with other brands who are leading in this space too. Um, we ask those questions. How are you approaching this? What are the areas of focus for you? 
um, and then start to form your strategy, um, marrying that that impact with those those areas where you can start to build momentum. I think through our experience, what we've really found is 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 a key is building momentum. I think it's how are we building buy-in throughout the company continually and, and shifting um, the strategy of the organization to to build this more centrally. So. I would say that's, yeah, those are the pieces for me. It's almost like start with your identity. Um, who are you? What, what, are you? what are your values? What, what is the belief of the organization? Then map out the impacts that you have, um, both social, environmental, understand that. And then start to bring together those conversations of those small projects that you might be able to start building momentum behind. Because I think once you do that, people can then start to see, oh, actually, there is benefit in this. Um, and it starts to become and it starts to snowball. And I think that that's that's the power. So I, 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 it can be overwhelming, I say, when you, when you look at it in, in full scope. Even for us, there's, there's places that we still want to get to um, that are really out there, really um, big in scope. But I think you just have to start and start um, in an intelligent way. People in the space are willing to share information. So, so leverage that. I, I love two things you just said there. One, collaboration. I think of mm-hmm. inevitably we talk about that all the time. And I think one of the most beautiful things about this social impact space is the ability for companies that are competitors in real life and business be able to tackle social impact challenges together and not to be fearful of sharing that information. So I love that you said that. It's very um, kindred, kindred spirits on that. And then to just start with small small steps, right? Achieving small steps to hit the larger goal. If you just start at like, you know, running that marathon, it becomes really, really tricky. But if you think about the small steps to build the momentum, I love that. I hear that as a great foundation. Um, and it's wonderful to hear it so successful for you as well. Yep. And, and I think just adding, and, and knowing it's possible, I think from wherever you are on that journey, everyone has a role to play and everyone can play a role. And, and, and even if you move it just a, a millimeter forward, that's a millimeter further than it was. So I think, yeah, people shouldn't be overwhelmed by it. Um, and yeah, should should lean into that really. Dan, you mentioned buy-in. So yep. that's always, for me, I'm, I'm pretty new to the CSR space, but I've learned a lot about, you know, it, it has to come, a lot of it has to come from your grassroots. So, you know, as a successful manufacturing retailer, how has Arcteryx commitment to ESG affected um, the employees and its people? Yeah, I, I think in many ways, I mean, we, I go back to that, I, I return to it often because it, it's true. It's really the, the expression of the values. I think we have so many people who at their core have concern for people and planets. I think that's, that's kind of reflective of, of, of why people gravitate towards the brand. That then reflects in this, this grassroots movement that everybody has this desire to, to try and get involved and how can they build stronger communities and ecosystems. What's our role in that? I think then our expression of the work really needs to center, um, yeah, the importance of uh, just this equity, diversity, and inclusion um, is a really important topic within within the scope of ESG. For our, our organization too, how do we embed that and create an environment within our workplace that is receptive um, to those principles that we have around justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion? Um, it's shifting in terms of the education that we have. It's considering our recruitment practices. Um, and that's to say, I think, as I, as I mentioned before, we're all on a journey, and I think we are on a journey in that space too, um, really trying to understand the impacts that we have and trying to continue to get better. Um, but it is, it's creating that primarily a safe space where everyone within our, our organization feels supported and welcome and included. And then starting to bring them into the work as well. I think that's something we're continuing to try and do more is identify opportunities all across the business where, where people can get involved in this work that we're doing. We look at areas around the way we tell our stories, the way we design our products. How are we doing that in a way that is mindful of, of the need to include people in the outdoors, to, to invite a welcoming space? So everywhere within the organization, there are opportunities. And I think our role is really to create the safe, environment, this welcoming environment, and then provide people that connection to our ESG work. 
um, so they can get involved in it and feel part of it too. And have you noticed a change with, you know, the team or the business or the culture over the past couple of years since you've been implemented? Yeah, I would definitely say, I think we're, we're getting more focused in the way we, we provide opportunities to our team. Um, I don't think the, the baseline commitment has changed. I think that's always been bubbling along within the organization. I would say the way we're now structuring it so that we can, can provide opportunities to our team is getting better all the time. Um, I'd say too, I think this moment, um, the racial justice reckoning, the pandemic has really highlighted the inequities that exist across society. Um, they are not new, they have existed for many centuries, but I think the awareness of the impacts and the existence of those inequities has come to the fore. I would say that continues to promote a shift of, of what is our role, what is our responsibility, how might we be um, creating some of those barriers that exist. And I think that's that's a shift that I'm witnessing within the business community and, and society as a, a whole. Um, and I think it's a positive, a positive one that society is coming to terms with the inequity that exists. Um, and the real challenge for businesses in this conversation is really what is our role and how do we how do we actually move that conversation forward? Um, yeah, so that's that. It's a it's a significant shift that I've, that I've seen in the last few years. When you think more broadly about the ESG space, knowing knowing even some of the dynamics that have shifted over the past couple of years, what challenges would you have would you say you've seen in the ESG space, whether in coming up with programmatic plans, uh, even your core values. Yeah, just a bit of a behind the curtain on what are the, some of those challenges for you? I, w I would say it's probably many would share this. Um, the scope is huge, um, what we're trying to, 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 to tackle. Um, yeah, the scope of that is, is, is huge and it requires a collective effort. And I think it requires us to unpick the way things have been done. It requires us to question. Um, I see with fear when, whenever I see it mentioned that we need to go back to business as normal as quickly as possible. Um, you look at the, the inequity that exists in society, the climate challenge we're facing right now, business as normal has led us to that position. So I think that's the big question of how do we, in this moment of challenge, take the time to question, take the time to sit in that discomfort and, and understand maybe different ways of, of approaching the work. I would say that is at the heart of it. I think it's this, this piece of how do we truly shift to equity within society is, is the big challenge. Um, and then I think for us on a, more, on a slightly more practical level, um, it's the, the point that I touched on with, with your answer, Carl. Um, it's really how, how do we unlock the potential within our team? Um, we see this, Every time I'm fortunate enough to do the, the onboarding for our sustainability work and people who join are always so energized and so engaged. And this is the reason I came here and this is what I want to do. And how do we unlock that potential? Because there's so much potential everywhere, but we have a very small team. How are we able to unlock that? Because um, if we can unlock that work and start to truly embed it within each of the departments, then we're in a radically different place um, than we are today. So. Yeah, those are kind of the challenges, I would say. Excellent. And with that in mind, you know, I, I, I do always come back to the, what is a brand new company first tackling ESG? I always come back to this piece because I think they're looking to, to learn from the experience in this space. But, you know, knowing maybe taking the, how do you unleash the power of your people and the scope in mind, what, what advice would you have, you know, to do differently for a company brand new to this space, knowing what you know now, what would you say of how to tackle some of those challenges as, as a company for starts? I think listening, I'll be honest, I think listening is at the heart of it. The more you can, can listen, and I say that from my belief that, that really what we're seeing a shift is, is that a lens of equity is being applied at a, at a greater depth than it's ever been applied before. Um, I still think we're a long way to go from, from, from where it needs to be. Um, but that piece, I'd say that is that is critical in this work. Um, within our space, I think it's looking at, you've seen in the conservation movement within Canada, a shift over time that continues to happen and needs to happen more um, to understanding the Indigenous people's perspective in conservation. I think uh, historically that's bit conservation has been done in the absence of that perspective being included. 
um, we're starting to see more credit, due credit given um, to Indigenous peoples and their work around how are we conserving these lands? What does that mean? I would say applying that in all contexts, um, really listening to the people you're intending to serve and how are, are that, that group informing the programs, building the programs and continuing to, to develop them. Um, and for the, the businesses too, it's, 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 I'm very much inspired by the, the Trust Based Philanthropy Project, um, which if nobody's seen, it's, it's well worth checking out. Um, really talks this idea of the power that's held in, in the hands of the funder. How do you start to shift that and, and transfer um, the power and resources to those most impacted by inequity? I think when you start to get into that place, um, then we really start to see shifts in the world. And it is, it requires a movement of, of where businesses have traditionally held this power to shifting it into the hands of, of, of other groups and it is, it's a change, but I think it's a necessary one and, and one I hope we will see in, in the years ahead. Um, so yeah, I think really listening, listening more, if there's, if there's one takeaway, that, that would be it for me. And you kind of led me to my next question. <laughs> I think we're on the same wavelength. That's pretty cool. <laughs> As we look forward then, what are some of the big changes that you'll, you'll see in terms of overall commitment to ESG? I know you just mentioned trust-based philanthropy, but what else do you, you kind of see on the horizon? And even, you know, if you think about what the next two or three years might look like, what, what from your opinion, might be in areas that we might see change? Yeah, I, I think that's it. It's an acknowledgement, really, of the, the long-term scale of these, these challenges we're facing, whether it's um, within our space, we, we look at equitable access to nature as, as one of our priorities. Um, again, it's not something that's going to change within a short timeline, and it's how are we embracing that and understanding really this is a long-term challenge and how are we supporting it for the long term. Um, that's why I really think the shift needs to come. It's continuing to like this long-term commitment and at the center of that, really trusting the people most impacted. I think that's, if that shift happens, I think great things will come. We see that with our partners when we trust our partners and, and we seek to do that wherever, in every, any format we can. Um, they know the work, they know the work that needs to happen. They can listen to their community. They can build programs that are relevant. You see that take hold, it, it's powerful. And I think all it requires is to continue to to move the power and resources more centrally um, to those most impacted. So that's that's really what excites me. Um, I think that's the, the shift that we're starting to see. It's not at the scale it needs to be, um, unquestionably. Um, so that's where that's where my mind goes in, in a few years' time. I think continuing that for pushing out 20 years, 50 years into the future, um, then we start to really get into more of these places of where we can consider um, achieving equity within society. I'd say as well, like it's worth calling out the one of the challenges um, that I that I see, and I'm fortunate enough to mentor on a program with an amazing organization called Starfish Canada. Um, people should check them out; they're doing great work. Um, really trying to support um, under 25 leaders within the environmental space. And the one question that they said is, as if you look five years out, what are the biggest challenges you see in this work? And burnout was rated by far and away like the biggest challenge. And I think that's something that we, we can't underestimate. Um, the people engaged in this work, there's a heavy lift upon them to, to engage in it. And I think that too, being mindful of the the burnout that's associated with that and how do we support and as businesses, how do we um, yeah, leverage our resources to support that too. I think that's an integral piece that has to be um, coupled with the movement that we're seeing. So true. The piece around people and all aspects of them from diversity at conclusion, burnout as a piece, all laddering up to that, that social piece as well. That's a key component. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you. That's really helpful, helpful lens. So Dan, just to touch on that, when you're talking yep. about burnout a little bit more, um, do you see um, more people have more a form, like a more formalized role in ESG, similar to how we've seen in CSR, DE and I, and so on? Yeah, I, I think that's the way we, we need to go. It's um, the team structures is a really interesting question as well. I think that piece of there's questions of do you build a big team that's dedicated to this work versus do you embed it? 
I actually think the, the the answer sits somewhere in the middle. It's it's having enough of a team that can hold hold the knowledge around what might be impactful, hold the understanding of from listening to the community. They can can be sort of the guardians of some of the knowledge, and can then inspire and and spark conversations within different teams. I think that's the the, the sweet spot, and it's how big that team is. I, I'm not sure, but I really think. There's a central importance of having people who are listening to that community and, and what's moving and what's at the cutting edge and what's maybe 50 years down the line. That's integral. And then how do you spark that conversation within each of the teams within, within the business? Um, that, I think, will be the ideal model. The other thing we're starting to see, too, is, is at that senior leadership level, um, a voice around impact. Um, I would say that is critical. I think how is that voice being heard in those conversations is, is integral as, as we move forward. If it's not being heard, we're missing this lens of, of impact and inequity and everything that it, that it holds. Um, so those are two pieces. I think that's seen on the senior leadership team is, is really important. Having a team that's big enough to hold the work, but then having it in every role within the organization. Um, that I would say is, is, is the model structure. And I, I'm not convinced many have, have that right yet. I think everybody's trying to, to understand the, the best way to do it, but I would see that as, as the, the ideal. And remember, if you're getting value from this video, we'd really appreciate you hitting that like button. And the question of the day for you is, have you implemented or planning to implement uh, ESG programs with your business? And if so, how have you implemented it? And what are some of your challenges and some of your successes? Let us know in the comment section below. Uh, so Dan, when you take a look around, besides Arcteryx, do you see any other businesses, organizations, or groups that are doing ESG well? Yeah, I, I would say there are businesses doing it well in, in different dimensions. Um, I think there are a few that are wrapping it together in a holistic whole. Um, I'm always hesitant to sort of single out individual organizations because, because of that reason. I think there are elements within each of us. We're, we're all on the journey. Um, I think... So I, I almost think there are, what am I looking for when I'm thinking about who, who's doing this work well? I would say it's long-term commitment is the essence. It's like, is, is that work that you're committed to the long-term commitment of the, the brand? And are you committed to that for the long-term and truly trying to get to the, the root of that challenge you're seeking to support? Um, the question of then how are you approaching that is really important to me. Are you, who are you centering? Who's, who's deciding that strategy? which voices are involved in shaping it. Um, and then really a piece that I see with, with some organizations more than others is, is this radical transparency. I think to me, that's, that's where we need to go again. It's, it's acknowledging that we're not perfect. We're not where we want to be. Um, but how are we moving in that space and moving towards this position that we want to get to? Yes, we have these challenges. Let's name them and share them openly. Why are those challenges? I think that piece is one that's often not said. It's often not shared publicly. And I think, how do we do that more? Um, so I don't know, I w I'd be hesitant to single out any any individual organizations because I think there's elements of different ones um, that I certainly look to. Um, but those are the more the qualities. It's like, is the, is the work aligned to your values? Is it a true expression of them? Are you committed for the long term? Are you using a lens of equity as you approach it? Um, and are you radically transparent in the way you share it? So I think those are my lenses and they will show up in different organizations in different ways. Um, it might be a frame for, for people to have a look at as well. And so f final question. So Dan, do you have anything else to, in, uh, to add in terms of ESG? Yeah, I mean, I think the fact that people are listening to this or watching online is great. And it's a testament to people's commitment to the work. Um, I would say too, I think, Ask those questions, try and understand and tie it to your values. That's where we've really seen um, the initial ball start rolling. It, it comes at, it's a discovery of our values. It's kind of unearthing the values that we have. And then based on that, building the programs that, that take action towards these goals, these ESG goals. Um, that's what I would really say. I think everyone has a role to play in it and everyone can uh, advance the work. Um, don't be overwhelmed. It, it, it is overwhelming. Even, even when you are slightly further along that journey, it's still overwhelming. But I think just starting 
and asking other people to it's I, I always say that I'm always happy to chat with people um, if they're seeking to do this work that's a great thing so reach out to others in your industry in your sector um, to try and get the knowledge you need to, to start in the program uh, so Dan how would uh, anybody who wants to reach out to you connect with you yeah I mean feel free to reach out on LinkedIn um, I'm happy to, to follow up with any questions people have um, yeah just just add me on there and then send me a message so if you're inspired by what Arcteryx is doing in the ESG space then you'll love what these companies are doing by watching this playlist on how they're making a social impact. Thank you very much for watching and we'll catch you in our next episode.